The Har, a Hindi language crime mystery and thriller web series created by Reema Kagti and Zoya Akhtar, starring Sunakshi Sinha, Gulshan Devaya, Sohum Shah, Vijay Verma in the lead roles, is finally released on Amazon Prime. As the series releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to talk about the show, explain the ending and discuss all the hidden details and real life references. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the series. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you are at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The series starts with showing a random woman lying dead inside a woman's toilet. The women standing outside are trying to get inside of it, however they are unaware of the truth. From the very start, the series shows us the brutality of the killer and takes us into this world. Then after the intro, we are introduced to Anjali Bhati, SI of the Mandawa precinct. And she is right now overseeing the disappearance case of a Thakur girl, who presumably eloped with a Muslim guy. The SHO of the precinct Devilal Singh is handling the case and has to face severe backlash for not complying with the extremists. Then we meet a lower caste character named Murli who is also searching for his missing sister Krishna. The local politician and extremist leader Mahipal Singh creates a ruckus over the disappearance of the girl and organizes a protest in front of the police station. We also get introduced to Anand Swarnakar, a college professor, and his behavior seems quite sus as he keeps stalking one of his students. In the present timeline, he enters a van meant to be a mobile school and takes out a bunch of pictures to pleasure his desires. The van has inscriptions of a poem about a fish out of water. The nursery rhyme written by Mr. Ramesh Bhai is morphed into this context to represent the terrible fate of Anand's victims. When Mahipal takes the boy who was with the Thakur girl to the police station, the officers take the boy into custody. Because Devilal Singh is aware of his innocence, he feels compassion for the accused. Meanwhile, Mahipal puts pressure on the police department. They want to register a case against Altaf and want to prosecute him as a kidnapper and a molester. However, Devi and Anjali sympathize with his condition and help him escape. By looking at the inefficiency of the police force, the SP appoints the case to Pergi, a corrupt police officer who is quite jealous of Anjali's rise to success. He is also having problems with his family. We finally get to see a flashback that occurred six months ago, when Krishna first meets Anand Swarnakar. He almost forces the girl to take a lift and follows her to her destination. At first, he appears as a kind-hearted man, but his intentions are not in the right place. In the present time, we also get to meet Anand's family and the disturbed man comes to know about his wife's affair. Later, Anand can be seen on a video call with a girl Mariam using an alias. Meanwhile, Kalas launches his own investigation into Krishna's case after learning that Krishna was speaking with a man by the name of Javi. Bharti, on the other hand, learns that Krishna once had a conversation with a man by the name of Vijay. Murli also agrees with Anjali's suspicion and tells her that he lied to the police and made up a Muslim name as the culprit so the police could quickly begin their investigation. On the other hand, when Mahipal's men get to Javed's village, they beat him badly before tying him up with a rope on the railroad track. A train is seen heading in Javed's direction, but Anjali is able to save him in time. He tells the police that his sister went missing as well and through her call records they find a common caller who is also a missing girl. The police are not able to pinpoint a potential suspect and Mahipal brings the Thakur girl to the police station and she is forced to launch an allegation of kidnapping against Altaf. Anand is back on his business and calls Arti another potential victim of his and later goes on to teach the students of the backward community. Before coming to that place, he melted some gold he confiscated from his last victim and sells it to a smuggler. He goes on a date with a girl called Lata and tells her that his family is not willing to marry him to a poor family. He tells her to run away with him and it seems this is his usual tactic to get his victims out of their homes. Anjali on the other hand is able to find more such victims and makes an almost complete list of women who went missing without a trace. She is able to find that most of these girls belong to the backward class and were unable to pay a dowry and by looking at the same method of killing she is able to pinpoint that the culprit is a lone wolf and not an entire gang. Though her superiors, especially Pargi, disagrees with her. In the meantime, Devilal is summoned to the school and learns that his son has bullied one of the students. And it turns out the kid is Anand's son. He is impressed by Anand's behavior and is unable to see the demon under his skin. 
Their investigation leads them to a girl called Sindura, where she is alive and well and living a happy life with her husband. When she gets the call from Anjali, she gets agitated and even attempts to commit suicide. When Anjali visits her, Sindura refuses to talk about the actual incident and tries to divert her investigation. It seems she is trying to forget a horrific memory and is unwilling to talk with anyone about it. In the interim, Anjali and Pargi finds out the body of Muli's sister and her condition is no different. She too has died of the poisonous reaction of the cyanide and they shakes Pargi from the inside. He feels scared to bring a child into this horrific world and tries to convince his wife about an abortion. Later, Pergi manages to find the car in which Altaf was kidnapped in and locates the owner, but it turns out that it was stolen from him a few days ago. While cleaning his kidnapping van, Anand's son steals a cell phone from his father's fetish box and takes it to his school. Anand goes to pick up Lata and the outcome is no different. The police are able to find her body the next day. Upon returning home when his wife confesses about Jay and her relationship, Anand messes up with his hair dryer which kills the lover instantly. While investigating the sudden death, Anjali and his team get a surprising lead. One of the victim's phones just got booted and they track it to the nearby school. It was revealed that Anand's kid brought it along with him and some bullies including Devi's son snatched it from his hands to watch porn. When questioned, the innocent kid revealed that he got it from his father's van. The police go to search it thoroughly but find nothing at all. Later it was revealed that Anand, after finding out that one of the phones is missing, got rid of them all and fabricates the entire scenario by stating that he picks up discarded stuff and puts it in a lost and found box. Bharti is convinced that he is the culprit but her team members are unwilling to submit it as proper evidence against him. She discusses all the details with a psychology expert and he tells her that Anand does match the profile. So to collect more evidence against him, Bharti sneaks into the van, however Anand locks her in and presents her in front of her SHO. Now the investigation is more complicated as any further evidence confiscated from the van will not be submissible as the van has been illegally tampered with. Meanwhile, the Thakur girl again runs away from her home and the influential man uses his powers to force the police department to search for her again. Anand on the other hand gets rid of all the evidence and souvenir he has collected so far which pisses him off internally. After getting the news of the killer, Sindura commits suicide and gets admitted to the hospital. Anand manipulates Aarti by saying that his father has appointed several police officers on his trail so if anyone comes to her, she should deny any connection with him. When Anjali comes to talk with her, she lies to the police officer by saying that she is not Aarti. But when a dead body is discovered, Bharti gets a massive shock. She gets pissed and starts searching for the reason Anand is doing all this. In reality, this is just another cliche childhood trauma plot. He has seen his father beat his mother, kill her by throwing her down a flight of stairs and torture his other family members. Anand's repressed feelings erupted into his violent streak because his father had him remain quiet about the crime. Anand is a product of the patriarchal society that instills in men a hatred for independent-minded women. He believed that women should abide by the restriction placed upon them. He probably believes that if his victims had just consented to marry a complete stranger as opposed to falling in love, they would still be alive and well. These ladies lost their lives simply for choosing to oppose patriarchy and the dowdy system. When he makes one of his students fall in love with him and later exposes her to her parents, we can presume that this student of his has no choice but to get married because her parents will view her degree as a springboard to promiscuity. And according to him, such behavior deserves the heaviest penalties. Throughout the series, there are several characters who had independent open-minded women like Bharti's mother and Devi's wife, who refuses to send a child to a debate competition because she might end up like Anjali. So far in this series, the biggest mystery is the girls locking themselves in a bathroom and then consuming cyanide willingly. However, while consuming a contraceptive pill herself in the locked bathroom, Anjali discovered that Anand was providing the female cyanide-less contraceptive pills, drawing clear parallels to the real-life serial killer Cyanide Mohan, and making it appear as though the ladies' suicide were brought in by their own free will. Anand frames his brother Shiv by leaving images of his victims in Shiv's car and leaving his car and a water bottle from his house at the scene of the crime. As a result, the police pursue Shiv and bring him in for interrogation. It doesn't help Shiv's case that cyanide, which is used to make gold, is present in his business. He is oblivious to his brother's deeds, but the police think that he is holding off information. But with extreme interrogation, they are unable to find any means to solve the case. 
In the meantime, Pergi finds out that it was Devi and Anjali who aided Altaf in his escape, but his conscience stops him from revealing it to the Hirabs. He has a change of heart and decides to visit his wife and soon to be born kid. He even helps Altaf and Rajni to get married in the court. In the meantime, Sindura regains consciousness, but because it is getting close to the end of their legal window to have Shiv detained without being charged, Anjali goes to Vandana and asks her to reveal the truth about Anand. In the hopes that Vandana may spot someone or something in the photos taken from Shiv's car and connected to Anand, Anjali also warns her that they suspect that Anand killed Jay. This information motivates Vandana to confront her husband. She also understands that Anand is in whom he claims to be when she sees one of the victims in the photograph wearing the same necklace that Anand gave him on their anniversary. Anand locks her in the toilet after she confronts him about it, steals some clothing and jewelry and flees. However, Anjali and Devilal get confirmation of his villainy when Sindura identifies him and agrees to testify against him. After blackmailing his father and extorting some money from him, Anand arrives in Mumbai and tells Shiv the truth about what really happened to their mother and how their father murdered her. Anand had already left by the time Shiv alerts the police to his present location. The focus of the story then turns to Goa where Anand marries Miriam Shushila while assuming the identity of Richard Abraham. Though at first it seemed that he is going to use her to quench his bloodthirst, it seems Anand constantly requires a wife to maintain his family man appearance constant while he commits unimaginable crimes. Anand continues his pattern of courting ladies, having sex with them and then murdering them with cyanide pills after settling down as the Hindi teacher at a nearby school, cutting off Miriam's contacts and making her overly dependent on him. Then Renuka, a nurse, becomes his most recent target. The fact that Anjali and Devilal are still looking for him in Nagpur has caused them to fall far behind. They run out of money by the time they find out Anand is in Goa and are told to return to Mandawa. However, Anjali, Devilal and Kailash get to resume their search for Anand after Miriam makes a bank transaction and they are able to locate them. In the meantime, Anand has already committed to marrying Renuka so that they can engage in sexual activity. Fortunately, Anjali, her group and the rest of the Goa police find the hotel Anand and Renuka are staying in and are able to apprehend Anand. Renuka would have received a cyanide-less contraceptive pill from Anand and eventually died if they had waited until the following morning. Anand is then taken to Mandawa and imprisoned for his misdeeds at the conclusion of Dahar. Anand responds to Anjali's inevitable questions about his motivations by bringing up the traditional idea of punishing promiscuous women. Upper caste males like Anand consider themselves as the rule makers for everyone, especially women, despite the fact that it has become cliche at this point. And if someone tries to rebel, these guardians of a backwards culture turn to prejudice or even murder. Unable to accept his defeat, Anand does make one more attempt to damage Anjali's reputation by using caste's insults and bringing up her seeming closeness to her boss Devila. Anjali, however, visits the central press office to have a surname changed back to Megawal, so it doesn't appear to have any effect on her. Her father had changed their surname to save her from racism and casteism. She has been constantly insulted throughout the series for being a lower caste woman, but by the end of the series, she wins by accepting her true identity. The series is a decent attempt from Amazon Prime to tell a potentially good thriller with layers of undertone casteism and sexism narrative, however the series fails to keep the tension equivalent throughout its runtime. At points it seems stretched and dull, though it generates some burning questions about our society and its functions, the series fails to provide a fitting payoff. But you can definitely give it a watch to witness another enchanting performance from Vijay Burma. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video, do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching The Heart on Amazon Prime, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off, Acha chalta ho chubhutani ke and I'll be back.